Space Coconut. Okay, let's talk about that amazing, informative Q&A session. But before I get into this ridiculous thing, you can do something ridiculous too and follow me on Twitch where I stream every Saturday at 10 a.m. Pacific and have random streams during the week. This video is probably out while I'm streaming, so give me a follow, check me out, come and talk to me, and uh, tell me how wrong I am about the uh, dev team. Feel free to join the Coconut Discord if you'd like to know when those random streams will be and be part of our growing invasion force. We don't raid other streamers, we invade them. Links are in the description. So, let's start with this clip. Why does Trail of Torment reveal the generator's aura? So, if if we didn't have this, the survivors would have no idea that anything had even happened. So we want to give survivors an indicator that something has at least happened. Uh, the aura of reveal can be used to fool survivors into, into making decisions they normally wouldn't. And while they're paying attention to the generator, you may try to approach them from a different angle and catch them off guard. So. I mean, you see the, the, the generator off in the distance turn yellow and you kind of keep your eye on it because you want to know like how long the effect is happening and that can distract you. Also, once this happens, you can start behaving differently because you know the killer is oblivious or you're oblivious to the killer. Well, maybe he's using that just to freak you out and he's not actually going to come after you and then you're more cautious for no reason. So it, uh, it does have its uses. If we didn't do this, survivors wouldn't know anything happened. Kind of like the global, I was going to say global warming, kind of like the global warning <laughs> that the ghost has when he goes into stealth mode, right? Or when Myers is in tier one, or when Tinkerer goes off and the killer becomes undetectable, or when Insidious triggers undetectable, or when Dark Devotion triggers undetectable. There's no real reason for this handholding other than the devs in their thousands of hours of gameplay experience determining that survivors don't know how to use their third person camera to keep an eye on their surroundings. This is seriously the stupidest reason to have the gen that's kicked have an aura that's visible to survivors. The only reason I could see this being a good compromise for getting undetectable would be if the killer could track survivors for a short period of time after kicking the generator. But then, the survivors know the killer would be coming for them and they'd scatter and hide, completely driving this perk into uselessness. The pre-written response tries to give a tactic with the aura reading in tricking survivors who don't know how to pay attention to their surroundings into behaving in a way that would be beneficial to the killer. He continues by saying for the killer to come in from a different angle and catch them off guard. But that's in 16 seconds. While this is kind of true, and the killer can move about 74 meters in that time, it doesn't matter if a survivor can see where you're coming from and can keep an eye on different approach angles. Of course, paying attention to your surroundings is an extremely difficult and high skill tactic that only the best red ranked survivors can accomplish. It takes a great deal of skill and precision to move your mouse so you can see your surroundings. Skill which these devs clearly believe the vast majority of survivors don't have and need a signal to show them that something happened. Let's try to forget this ridiculous excuse and move on. In case you didn't know, the mods on the forums ask for community questions and the members will vote to see which questions are answered in the Q&A. However, for some reason, the devs still pick questions that they can't answer. Of course, it's still like a work in progress. So many answers to these questions will be like, you know, more details to come, but uh, <laughs> but you will have to stay tuned uh, for the future. Uh, we can't really go into the details. There's so many characters. We'll have more information on that at a later date. Redacted. So Why the hell are you gonna take questions for a question and answer stream and not answer the freaking question? We get it. This is game development, and you can't give us some information on things we'd like. It's just the nature of the business, right? Like, uh, when will sounds be fixed? But don't read a question on a Q&A that you have no intention of actually answering. If you simply want to pick the most voted questions, list them at the beginning of the Q&A as questions you can't answer, and move on to talk about things you actually can talk about. You're wasting your time and ours by doing this, and you should really take a moment to ask yourselves if the question you're going to put into a Q&A is actually worth your time into answering 
spend our time listening to your answer. Here's my favorite one. Ding Dongs is asking, is the clown getting any other changes or is it the changes you were talking about? I've been looking at Clown and his performance for a while. And having played him, I think he's underrated. But the power seems to be so well hidden, not a lot of people are finding it, and that, that needs to be addressed. Get this. This guy, if I remember from the first time they introduced him, is in charge of balance. This guy thinks that the Clown is underrated, and that players with thousands of hours of experience actually playing the game, don't understand how to use his power to its fullest potential. If this guy was in charge of balance back during the Lunar New Year event, my favorite deliberate change to bring up by the way, no, I'm never letting this go. If this guy was in charge of balance back then, he's the same guy who thought that flashlight and pallet stuns needed to be able to stun the killer in the middle of the pickup animation. This is what that looked like to all killers is that they fixed an issue that made it impossible to rescue a dying survivor with a pallet or flashlight while being picked up or dropped mid-animation. Now the pickup or drop animation will play fully followed by the flashlight or pallet stun. This means that getting killer grass saves now is incredibly easy because it does not matter when you throw the pallet or blind the killer. As long as you get the stun or the blind, the killer will drop that survivor. The thing that sucks about this the most is that it was intentional. If it was unintentional, we would have cut the dev some slack. We would have been like, oh shit, here comes another bug, oh boy. But at least, you know, they would fix it. The worst part about all this though is that the fact that the devs decided to add this into this game and it's not a bug. This isn't something that was unintentional. This was intentional. This is what the devs want. This is what they amplified in their game without letting any of us know or without anyone even complaining about this. This is so ridiculous, but what makes this worse is this isn't a bug as part of patch notes. This is intended as balance. This isn't balance. What the fuck are they thinking? And this guy is telling us that the clown is underrated and that we don't understand how to use his power. Redacted. This guy. The devs need a new balance guy who has more than 20 hours of match experience and three clown matches against five hour survivors under his belt. Oh, and they're investigating the possibility of making more updates to improve his viability. Which doesn't include reading the feedback form, which I'm sure has plenty of suggestions for the clown to make him better as well as pointing out the flaws in his design that make him a bad killer in the first place. Maybe your investigations should start there with the players who play the clown on a regular basis. Maybe. But sure, you guys keep investigating. I'm sure you'll figure out what's wrong with him eventually. Seriously, don't bother reading the feedback forms. There's no way the players can help you fix clown, right? You and your all-knowing grandeur don't need help from the player base, do you? As for the legendary outfit nonsense, there's an entire video by itself which will be out in a few days, so look forward to that. Everyone in the community is getting tired of the devs' incompetence. We're starting to see video after video, tweet after tweet, highlighting bugs and glitches, talking about core issues in the game, and what do we hear from them? I know I'm not the only one who feels this way. If you believe the devs can do better than they currently are, tell them. Because they want your money, and if I were you, I'd make them earn it. Behavior's yearly revenue went from around 35 million when I last checked to 113 million when I checked yesterday. Do you think they could spend some of that money to hire better balance people and more programmers to fix the bugs in the game? Or at the very least some quality assurance people to test the game before a new DLC gets dumped on us filled with more bugs than a bag of ants? If you think they're still an indie company that needs our money to make the game better and to pay their people, I have news for you. They already have enough money to make the game better. Better on a technical level. The graphic update and the, the new map look beautiful. But like other beautiful things in this world, beauty is all it has. Speaking about that, how about this lovely piece of form action that's relevant to this video? I saw this as I was finishing up this script. Written by Rocket Ringo, the new patch made the game infuriatingly broken and here's the list to prove it. 
Survivors now make no sound while doing anything unless it's an action, such as vaulting or repairing. Survivors no longer turn their heads to the direction they're looking, making it impossible to know if they have dead heart until they hit you with it. The new map is extremely broken and frustrating. It's easy to win on, but it's still extremely frustrating when I literally can't move down a hallway because objects like a hallway with a bunch of goo on the side of one wall block me from blinking or moving. Most maps have had their sounds removed related to survivor movement. No sounds while on the ground is not, not just a chance, it always happens. Killer lunges are broken on the survivor side as killers seem to play short lunge animation when they're really doing a long one, causing hits that don't look like the connect. This also applies vice versa, where you think you hit the survivor but instead you do a short lift. Grabbing is now more consistent on the killer side, but it's extremely broken on the survivor side. You can be on the other side of a pellet, hit the ground, and still be grabbed. This feels douchey. Cloud is bugged and his reload makes his movement speed extremely slow for a few seconds after. Survivors can once again get stuck inside hooks. This soft locks the game until they DC. As it's reported that you can't be killed by the ending collapse. The new map has a few spots that are completely safe, all of the time. Specifically, the corner of the courtyard where you can literally trap yourself in between pellets as a survivor, and the rest of the map is barren. Extremely boring and especially unfun when the map's geometry is broken. By the way, all survivors have iron will and don't breathe. Billy's bugged again. It's not as bad before, but Billy's bugged again. His animations are wonky and his movements has changed. It's reported that Billy's does not come out of his power where he's supposed to, instead, it can be too early or too late of an exit. It's reported that Blood Warden doesn't work on dying survivors on the new map. Generators generally don't make any sound, which is beyond ridiculous when the objective is generators. When trying to hook a survivor, the game sometimes will pull out its dedicated servers and force you to spam space to get the hook. Survivors and killers now both have an increased tendency to literally teleport to previous locations. The button to exit the game doesn't work, and it is all The button to exit the match doesn't work. Man, I love Dead by Daylight, don't you? Until next time, I'll see you in the fog.